Hi guys and welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and webdesignandtechtips.com. Well a gentleman called Thomas asked me to look at a site and they've got an effect going on. We've got a list here and as I scroll up the page you're going to see an info note appear up to the right here. There it is and this one's for settings and obviously have settings content in there. When we get to the end of our settings list, we've got another list called security. When we get to this, that one's going to disappear and another one's going to appear in its place with security and its info there. And we'll continue on down and it's going to do the same for our locked content and the same for the help at the bottom there. And when we roll back up, they'll go back as they were. Not quite what Thomas was looking for, but it's pretty close. And there's no coding involved in this today. We're going to do this with the features of the Divi theme on its own. So let's get started. I'm going to enable the Visual Builder. Once enabled, I'm going to go down to where I want to work. And let's just get rid of this section and we'll start from scratch. Little blue tab for the section up here. And we'll just hit the trash can. Okay, is that a new section? I'm just going to click on the line here, hit the little blue button, and I'm going to add a regular section. It's going to prompt us to add a row. For mine today, I'm going to use something with a small sidebar, perhaps something like this or something like that. I think I'll use this one. And it's going to prompt us to put in a module to our first column there. Divi comes as standard with all these modules, plenty enough to build just about any site. If you have WooCommerce installed, it'll also give you an extra dozen modules to display your products. I'm going to use a blurb module with mine today, purely so we can add an icon. And if I roll down a bit, there it is. It's added the blurb module there. And we've got a spare column on our right. So I'm going to call this settings. Obviously, I've got no real content. You'd have some real content there. Let's just move this over to the right hand side here so we can zoom in a little bit. I'm going to leave the default content in there like that, but I will add a list to it in a minute. I'm going to go down to image and icon just below. And let's use an icon. I'm going to do a search because they've teamed up with Font Awesome. And there's an awful lot of them now to scroll through. So I'm just going to do a search. Oh, it's got a great breakout box if you click on that little icon there, if you want to look through. Okay, so I'm going to get one with a little cog for my settings there. There it is up the top. If you want to link it to somewhere, you can hit the link down below here. I don't particularly want to do that for this module today as it's just a simple list. But if you do, you can link the title somewhere by putting a link in there. You can link the whole module somewhere by putting a link in here. And always best practice, if you're linking to your own site, leave it in the same window. If you're linking off site to somebody else's site, open it in a new tab. That way your site will stay open. Okay. Well, I'm just gonna go over to my design here and I'm gonna go to image and icon. I'm gonna make that little icon the default blue. I actually want it on the left hand side. So if a little bit further down, we've got image icon placement. I'm just going to pop that on the left. There we go. Now I've got lipsum.com open up here and I've generated a list. So I'm simply going to copy that. Control C to copy. And I'm going to paste it down below my little bit of content here. So if we go back to content, to text, we can drop down and just paste in our list there. And I'll just tidy it up a little bit. There's quite a few gaps there, but that's okay. I don't mind having a few gaps in the list. That's fine. That'll do me right there. Okay. I think I'll just add a, a little bit of space up there. Great. And I'm going to use this for all of mine, so I'm not going to go through this again. We've effectively effectively sorted that one out. Okay, well let's save this now. And what we're going to do is create the note that we want to have up at the top here now. So let's add a new module. 
And this time, I'm going to use a simple text module, which will be right down at the bottom there. Obviously, you can use any module that you want. It's got a bit of lorem ipsum in there already. I'm going to take that down and give it a title as well. I'll make the title same as our one over there, Settings. And just select it. Hit the drop down arrow by the paragraph up there and we'll turn it into a heading three. And there it is right there, very similar to the one we've got on the left hand side. Now you can style these text and headings in individually up here if you want to. For me at the moment that's fine. I'm going to leave it just as it is. I will give this thing a background. So back to content, I'm going to roll down and you'll find background right there. And let's perhaps give it a blue, a little lighter blue. I'm going to hit the little buttons. There's a lot of paler blue right there. That'll work for me. And I'll give it a bit of padding all around so it's not buffeted up against the sides. Over to the design tab. Down to spacing. I'm going to give it 20 pixels all around. Just put in the 20. It'll put in the pics. Hit the chain. It'll do opposite side. And we'll do the same for left and right. Great. So there's my little info bar right there. Or info box, I should say. Now what we want to do is when we scroll up the page here, I want that to disappear at the top, but I want it to stick just under our menu at the top there until we finish scrolling down our list here. So it's going to stay there and do that. So I'm going to go over to the advanced. We're still in the text module over here. I'm going to go down to scroll effects. I'm going to say stick, stick to top. I'm going to give it a bit of an offset because it's going to stick right on the bar there. I'm going to give it, say, 20 pixels. So it's 20 pixels underneath. Again, just put in the 20. It'll put in the pixels for you. And that's where it's going to stay while we roll up and down that list. Now, we created a row for these two modules. If I go in the back end here, it makes it easy to see. A little icon down to the left-hand side there is wireframe mode or back-end mode. We created ours with a row. We've got a row here. So I want to make the sticky limit the limit of the row because our list goes all the way down this row. But when it gets to the bottom of this row, I want that to stop sticking and just roll up as normal. So if I flip it back now, go down to where we were. And again, we're going to be in the advanced scroll effects down here. I'm going to say bottom sticky limit row. So when the row rolls past, it'll go back up the page. And again, if I put this over here so we can see, if I roll up now, you will see when it gets to the top, it's going to stick 20 pixels from the top until we get down to the bottom of this row, which is that list basically, and it's going to go on up. Okay, now I want to do it. So I'm going to add a couple more rows after this, but I want it to actually disappear i don't want it to see it until we it actually sticks to the top there which will be the top of our settings i might give give that a little bit of padding to push it down a bit more and we'll see it until it goes down here then i want the other one to fade in when it gets to the top up here so we're going to do a bit of hover colors to take care of this still in the text settings i'm going to go to the content to our background and if we look up here, and this is common to most Divi modules, if you hover over the dark writing up there, you'll see some icons appear. We're looking for a, a pin. There's the pin. And we can set a sticky state and a regular state. So when it's not sticking to the top, desktop mode, I don't want to see any background. When it is sticking to the top, I want to see that nice blue color again. Let's pop this open and see if we can't find that color again something similar there it is right there so when it's not sticking no background color when it is sticking background color and to make it totally disappear so the writing disappears as well we're going to do exactly the same for the heading text and the regular content text and you can go over hit these little brushes or you can go to design heading text and regular text I'll hit the little br brush there that'll take us straight to that h3 that we made there it is, H3. And I'm going to do exactly the same thing. I'm going to hover over Heading 3 Text Color, hit the little pin, 
And when we're not hovering over it, we want it to be transparent or see-through, so it should disappear. Fantastic. When we hover back over it, I want it to be quite dark. Probably not quite black. Let's just find one that's not quite black, black. There we go. That works perfectly. And we need to do the same for the content text right here. Hit the little paintbrush, it takes us straight to it. Roll over the dark writing, get the pin up. Desktop state, don't want to see it at all. So when I do this, it all should disappear. Great. When we hover over it, we want to give it some color to bring it back. Again, I'll hit the black too much. Let's choose something that's not quite as black as that. There we go. Okay, well, there's our little box. And as you can see, or as you can't see, it's disappeared. But when I scroll up and it starts to stick at the top, it'll appear. There it is right there. And this is how we're going to make the other ones scroll in. I'm going to give this a little bit more padding on the top to push it down a bit so it's more in line with that when it actually rolls in. So let's go back in here. I'm going to give this perhaps 70 pixels padding on the top over to design tab down to spacing and let's give it say 70 on the top. Pushed it down a bit. Now when we roll up let's see when our little module comes in. There we go, that's fine for me. You could take it down a little bit. It's coming in just as the settings is getting up there. Great. Well, let's make this work now. Let's add a few more sections and I'm gonna do it a really easy way. I'm gonna save this. I'm gonna go back into wireframe mode so you can see what's going on or back end mode, little icon there again. Here's our little row. I'm simply gonna clone it, two little squares right there it again oh, I've now got four little rows and they're all going to do the same thing but obviously we're going to want to go into the blurb module and change these things obviously put your new text and your new list in there I'm going to leave mine just as it is choose a different icon now we call this security so that's fine We'll do the same for the next one. In the content, I'll say locked. I think that's what we had before. And I'll just switch out that icon. There's one with a lock on it down here somewhere. There we go. And the last one, let's call that one help. And again, we'll change our little icon. Obviously, you'd have to change your list. As mine's fictitious, I'll leave it just like that. Help, I guess we we'll use that little teacher icon right there. Then we need to go in and do exactly the same for our modules here. Text, I'm gonna change that heading to help. And again, obviously you'd have different content below. Mine's fictitious, so I don't. Locked. And security, wasn't it? Okay, and let's flip this back to the front end again, desktop mode. There's our first list. There's our first little note popping in there as I scroll on down. It'll go up when it reaches the bottom of that row. And our next one, security, security will pop in, do the same thing. And the same for locked. And obviously you can give these different colors and things if you want to and help and it'll disappear off the top when we go past it so let's save our changes now and make sure this is going to work on the front end so i'm going to save my changes down here if you don't see your save button or save draft button just make sure you've got your little purple button expanded here on the bottom and once saved we can exit the visual builder Great, and let's scroll on down. And there's our first one, the settings, when we get near the top. It's info box will pop in with settings, and we roll past that list. The security info box will pop up. When we roll past that list, the locked one, etc. 
and of course it'll do the same going back up when it gets to the top of the row it'll disappear and the next one will pop down in there we go so there we go that's not quite what you were asking Thomas but it's pretty close and with no coding so I hope that helps you out either way that's a nice little feature to have on your site and pretty easy to do so I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful if you have, please give it a thumbs up, ring the bell, comment, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Once again, this has been Jamie from System22 and webdesignandtechtips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.